Okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, as you know that uh, we are currently dealing with lecture sessions uh, uh, sponsored by Litmania Literature, the Telegram group. So continuing those sessions, today Himanshi will speak on uh, Dalit literature. It will be a kind of expansion of the ideas that she has already put forth in her previous lecture. So there, there was a session on uh, 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 Dalit literature, which has been taken by Himanshi, but then she is again coming up with a session with a motto that she will expand her ideas more in this lecture. And uh, in the coming days, you will listen more uh, from our research scholar, uh, such as Shahrukh. Shahrukh will also speak uh, in the next lecture series, or Krishna will also speak, uh, and uh, of course Priya Sharma. We have we have to reschedule her classes because uh, she has had some work, her research work at PHU. That's why she will be able to join us later, perhaps in the upcoming week. So with that, uh, I would like to introduce the author, means the speaker. <laughs> so Himanshi is the speaker and uh, she has currently, I mean, she has already pursued her master's from PHU and uh, I hope that this time she is going to clear the UGC net also. She has performed very well. So with that, uh, Himanshi, are you there? Hello. Ha, yeah, I'm there. Fine, fine, fine. So Himanshi, now you can begin your presentation. Firstly, thank you so much, Sharu, for your voice words. Uh, hello, everyone. Today we are going to talk about Dalit literature. Okay, so uh, since gate exam is around the corner, I hope you must have filled up the form. And we are going to study Dalit literature because it is very important nowadays. And the questions are being asked, and especially in the gate exam. So uh, if you'll ask me what to prepare for the upcoming gate exam, so just go for Indian literature very thoroughly because they will be giving up questions in which there will be writers such as Mahashwita Devi, Gayatri Ch uh, Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak will also be covered. They belongs to Subaltern Studies Group. But uh, Dalit writers are also being asked in, in these exams nowadays. Okay, so uh, I'm presenting the screen. Just let me know if it is visible to you all. Is it visible to you all? Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Okay, okay. So today we will talk about Dalit literature. Okay. Uh, firstly, tell me who are Dalits? Can you answer this question? And let us make this in session very interactive, please. I don't want to be a one-sided uh, speaker and you, you to be ideally simply listening to the lecture. Just be a little more interactive because you are English literature students and you are supposed to answer, you are supposed to give logical and sometimes uh, illogical replies are also acceptable in English literature. Okay, because they are, our aim is to uh, make everybody speak here. Okay, so please be a little more interactive. So who are the Dalits? Of course, ma'am. One by one, one by one, one by one. Ma'am, Dalits are basically the marginalized or the subaltern groups who are subject to discrimination in the society and uh, are always suppressed by uh, upper class people in a society. Yeah, very well. Yeah. So, Dalits is, Dalit is basically a caste, okay? And it is considered as the lowest among the four other castes or Varnas. So basically, they were excluded from the four Varna system of Hinduism and were seen as the fifth Varnas. Uh, can you name the four Varnas? Let me name them for you. Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishyas and Sudras. Okay, And they were called as the Pancham or the fifth Varna. And a member of the lowest caste in India is called as Dalit. Generally, they are characterized as an untouchable. Okay, 
so this dalit word firstly appeared in marathi english dictionary by molesworth and from there we come to recognize these dalits as a marginalized community or uh, the people who are called as untouchable if you have read uh, uh, the work on the untouchable by mulkaraj anan i'll be referring to it now and then and for instance you can uh, if you have read it well and good you'll understand it more in a better way okay so what is dalit literature dalit literature can be considered as an autobiographical work a testimonial or a life writing okay these dalit writers are coming up and they are talking about their trials and tribulations which they have went through and they are putting it uh, across the people to know uh, they don't want any representative they want themselves to come up and they want their community and their people to come and tell the first hand instead okay so uh, you must have read these uh, australian aboriginal writers who they also talk about the similar things and they have also faced a similar kind of trauma and insult so you can relate the dalit writings with uh, australian aboriginal writings okay so what they are doing here they are basically recording their pain their suffering their humiliations which they have felt throughout and they are writing about it so the, the their experience of marginalization subjugation and differentiation is the basic focus in these writings so uh, if i am talking about dalit so quote and quote you can uh, name sc st obc and other marginalized categories such as uh, the dalit women dalit children and their life writings okay so basically in dalit writings what are the central theme they are talking about the unjust and the social practices which uh, unjust social practices which were not very you know full of modesty they were they were just very bad and they were criticizing these dalit people just by, for being a caste and they, they are of lower caste that's why they have to go through all this so <coughs> next uh it's the slide visible to all of you Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Have you have you read Michel Foucault? Have you anybody of you have read Michel Foucault's Theory of Knowledge and Power? Yeah. No. Okay, I'll tell you what is Michel Foucault's Theory of Knowledge and Power. In this uh, theory, he says that the one who has power gets the uh, authority to regulate the knowledge. Okay, and the one who has knowledge is considered to be at a powerful place. okay so this is a uh, integral relationship you can say uh, the vice versa happens here that the one who has knowledge will have power the one who, who has power will have knowledge okay so this uh, emission fuko in his works as talks about that uh, <clears throat> the uh, people who have knowledge get a authority to regulate uh, the society according to their needs and their demands and as the knowledge uh, if you talk about dalit literature so as you uh, know that the knowledge was in the hands of upper caste okay so they what they did they always modified it and they produced it according to their needs and they established a kind of hegemony can you uh, tell me who coined the term hegemony एरिस्टोक्रेटिक पीपल इन द वेरी सेम मैनर sanskrit was also not allowed for these people okay uh, for these dalits we we all pray shiva but we don't know uh, we don't know that there is a bhaka in uh, our society who doesn't even know shiva uh, if you will see uh, mulkaraj anand's untouchable there is a bhaka character is this protagonist and he doesn't know who the shiva is who the gods are who the uh, deities are so he goes to watch them and then he gets punished for that so this is the kind of discrimination they were facing and they were becoming slaves and laborers and 
their oh, customs, yeah. their traditions were seen in a very negative shade and are of very low quality. So what happened that whenever they used to arrange a uh, fair or they used to gather together, these uh, upper class men never went there because they thought that it will degrade their own position, the upper class people's position. Okay, and uh, the, their these Dalits uh, people they they got subjugated. Their wives got raped by these upper class men, and you know you can see a hypocrisy. They are ha condemning them. And on the other hand, they are subjugating them. They are, uh, you know, putting them at, at a very bad end. And again, take the example of uh, untouchables Bhaka. Sohini, his sister, is getting molested by the priest who is uh, making uh, this, uh, alleging this, that she touched him. Okay. So this kind of differentiation is always there. And uh, to eradicate that, what happened, that the Criminal Tribes Act of 1871 got passed by British government. So what happened here, that uh, these uh, Dalit people started protesting against the British annexation of forest and for land, and they revolted against it. Okay, because these Britishers were coming and taking away their land and their forest and their uh, acclaimed areas. Okay, so what they did, these Dalits, they revolted against it. But instead of getting justice, they got denotified and they were claimed to be criminals and thieves. And they got very severe punishment for this. With, uh, without any mistake, they used to get charged and they were sent to the jail. And the similar story is quoted by Mahashweta Devi also. She talks about a man named, a Dalit man named Budhan Shravan. And Budhan Shavan got captured by police and he got beaten up so badly that he died in the custody. And when uh, <laughs> he died, nobody came in uh, uh, in support of Budhan Shavan and uh, the case was dumb, okay, as if uh, nothing has happened. But Mahashweta Devi, you must have heard the name of Mahashweta Devi. Can you name one important major work by Mahashweta Devi? So Mahashweta Devi led a very uh, great movement against this for the punishment of these officers and uh, for the people who were responsible for the custodial death of Budhan Shavan. Later what happened that Budhan became a name of protest and his uh, death inspired various tribes and they performed theatres in the memory of Budhan uh, Shavan. So the, there was a protest theater as well, named as uh, Budhan Theater in Gujarat. And they enacted and performed Budhan story in a very cinematic form. And uh, a movie was also made on the life of Budhan Shravan. Okay, so till now, is it clear to all of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, now we will talk about the movement which came across and which led them to speak out their minds. Okay, so B.R. Ambedkar, uh, as we all know, is very famous for uh, support coming out in support of these Dalits. And uh, he saw that there were a few Dalit people who were denied uh, to, be, to drink water from the temple. Okay. So he led a Satyagraha movement and he gave a speech in this Mahat Satyagraha movement. And on December 25th, 1927, B.R. Ambedkar uh, called the day as Manusmriti Dahandivas. What is Manusmriti? Manusmriti is a religious text. Okay. And it talks about religious bifurcation. It talks uh, about how the society should rule according to the caste system. So uh, it, it propagates the idea that uh, Brahm, Brahmin was born from the head of Brahma, Kshatriya, Kshatriyas born from the arm, Vaishyas from the thigh and Shudras from the feet. So uh, uh, B.R. Ambedkar was like, why this, uh, this uh, so pious religious text is talking like this? If the religious text will promote these ideas, what other people will do? If our so famous sages are saying that we are having differentiation, we have born from this and that body part. So what other people will practice? So he burnt the Manusmriti and that day is considered as Manusmriti Dahandivas. Okay. If you remember Bhaka again, uh, there is a 
instance in which Mahatma Gandhi is coming and saying that uh, to uh, to eradicate this differentiation, what we can do is we sh instead of calling quote unquote chamar or chuhar, we should call them uh, as harijans. But this is not a proper solution. Okay, by giving them uh, some re due respect, you cannot eradicate the differentiation. Okay, and. Christian missionaries also came forward to introduce these unable children to the un untouchable children to the school. But what happened that they were also very biased. They also used to call them as of lower quality of uh, un uh, of a very bad uh, upbringing. Okay, and when English education came, they uh, excluded Dalits from English uh, studies. Okay, as we are English students, uh, uh, we need to know this that they were excluded from this. Too. And they got no representation in 19th century Indian Renaissance. And what happened later on, then uh, our, our own national uh, leaders started taking consideration. And you can take the example of Jyotiba Jyoti Rao Phule and Savitri Bai Phule. They opened schools for these Dalit uh, people. And a Dalit woman started teaching them and they started writing over uh, the very, very uh, big issue, which is now becoming a part as a, as a part of our community. Okay, so the first text of, about untouchables got published in Kerala. Uh, the name of that is the Slayer Slain. Okay, is it clear up till now? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, ma okay. okay, I'm changing the slide. So uh, I, I was telling you about the Slayer Slain by Mrs. Collins. She's an English missionary. Okay, no Indian writer is coming up and talking about these Dalits. Let me mind you. Okay. So this English missionary is coming and she is working with these untouchable communities and she is sharing her experiences and her point of view in support of Dalit people. Then our own writers took consideration and Bankim Chandra Chatterjee wrote Samya, which means equality, and he refers to the operation of lower classes. Then later on, uh, Rabindranath Tagore also came up and he also talked about the uh, humiliation which untouchables were going through. And he wrote a very famous work called as Gora, which deals with caste injustices. Okay. Now, uh, see, see, these writings, these uh, all uh, movements were very uh, effective when this Dalit Panther movement came across. Okay, so what is this Dalit Panther movement? Do you have any idea about Dalit Panther movement? Okay, let me tell you. Uh, there was a Dalit conference in Bombay in 1958 and Anna Bhau Sathe. He is a very major Marathi Dalit writer and he talked about Dalit literature. Okay. So what happened that when he, he did this conference, there was uh, similar minded people and they all wanted upliftment of Dalit. So what they did, they uh, started a kind of Dalit Panthers movement. And uh, Indian constitution had uh, also abolished the practice of untouchability in 1960s and 1970s. But uh, still the, the violence against Dalit were continued. So these Dalit writers came and they said, no, now we have an ideological agenda. We will follow an agenda in which uh, there will be an agenda of these Panthers, which will be to destroy the caste system. And we want an effective implementation of the reservations which we have got. So we will work accordingly. And they made policies against this uh, social injustices. Okay, and this uh, this was this movement uh, helped to uh, develop a kind of Dalit consciousness amongst the people. Okay, and the organization was founded by Namdev Dhasal, Ar Arjun Dangle, Raja Dhale, J V Pawar. They all were very famous people, and they were writing about Dalit during that time. But this movement did not last long because there was an inner conflict between Dhale and Dhasal. Their ideologies did not match. Therefore, the movement got into split. But they led to the development of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes uh, prevention of atrocity act. 
of 1989 so this this movement came out as a very strong agenda to make this dalit consciousness uh, to people to realize about their uh, region and about their uh, rights okay so i'm moving to the next slide now we, uh, since we are from literature background so we have to talk about the dalit writers so very very famous uh, see uh, knowing uh, whatever i have written in this slide and a little more you need to do your own research and you need to know a little more about these dalit writers okay so from that what you can do is you can uh, go in the exam and perform really well i guess so okay so uh, these dalit writers firstly i'll talk about arjun dangle arjun dangle edited uh, an anthology of dalit writing in english named as poisoned bread in 1992 okay so what happened in this that there were more than 80 writers who have written their poetry their prose fiction and autobiography so it all got compiled into one and an anthology got published okay so what is there in this book the book highlights the very deep seated beliefs of these uneducated old villagers and the youth of the community who are unable to understand the caste system you know there are instances in which you can see there are children who are not able to understand why they are being called as polluted or dirty even when they are bathing in oil and uh, where, where even when they are bathing and putting oil upon themselves then why they are called as polluted why they are called as dirty or an untouchable these these children are you know thinking that why why the, our classmates are not uh, treating us equally so this this is an anthology which is talking about all these writers and all the traumas they have been through okay coming to the next writer namdev dasar very famous and they, there was a question also uh, that who has translated uh, gol pitha okay so namdev dasar was a marathi poet writer and activist from maharashtra india and he was awarded padma shri in 1999 and a lifetime achievement award from sahitya academy in 2004 okay after being inspired by black american panther movement he followed dalit panther movement and uh, the i told you that there were uh, arjun dangle raja dhale jv pawar who were there along with namdev dasal in founding this dalit panther movement he is very famous for his work gol pitha okay and he also uh, translated a work named uh, uh, dilip chitre has translated his works under the name namdev dasal the poet of the underworld so what is there in gol pitha gol pitha is in uh, a way representative of bitterly criticized and outcasted abandoned people of the society okay so what happens in this that it is an attempt this work is uh, to make and ignite people for their fundamental rights to make them aware about their fundamental rights and the poem asks a very basic question that who is responsible for this degradation of dalit people in a way it is a very pungent attack okay on superstition on social evils and there is a revolt against the humiliation and inhuman things which have been there since the 3000 years ago since 3000 years so he is questioning this why why we are getting this kind of subjugation and in the poem he says man you should explode this is a very powerful line okay man you should explode and exploit all those materialistic things all those historical facts which are questioning your existence you should need to destroy all these discriminatory social system because they are putting you at stake they are not letting you to get your rights so you need to question it you need to ask for your rights so there is a very important quotation man you should explode okay you need to remember this that this is by namdev dasal they may ask you in the exam now moving on to the next writer babu rao bagul very very famous 
Babu Rao Ramji Bagul was a Marathi writer from Maharashtra, India, and he was also a pioneer of modern Dalit literature in Marathi. His first collection of stories was Jeva Me Ja Chorauli Ahi Thoti, when I had concealed my caste. Okay, what is there uh, in this work? He said that when I in this work, uh, when I hid my caste, there is a man named Masthur. Masthur is a Dalit man, and he is migrating to a new city in Gujarat to work for railways, and he is uh, he is forced to keep his caste secret in order to find a residence. Uh, but somehow his true identity comes out, and he barely escapes death at the hands of Hindu caste people. So there is another man uh, named as uh, Kashinath. He comes to rescue Masthur, and he uh, tells this casteist mob that why you are beating him, why you are seeing his Dalit identity, why don't you see he is an Indian, he is also a member of this country, why don't you see uh, that that he is also a citizen of this country, and why you are labeling him as a Dalit? He is working, he is living just like us. and you can see that there is a kind of uh, uh, you know we, we say that we all are divided we all have we don't have empathy and sympathy but here a dalit man has sympathy towards another dalit man and he is coming out in support and the, this incident is said to have been taken from baba saheb ambedkar's life history in which he was also living living at a parsi uh, guest house and he also concealed his caste just like this okay his other famous works are maran swasta hota hai sahitya ajache kranti vigyan ambedkar bharat and do remember this that death is getting cheaper was translated by very very famous nisim ezekiel okay now i am moving, moving on to the next writer daya pawar daya maruti pawar was an indian marathi language author and poet known for his contributions to dalit literature and uh, he also talks about the atrocities experienced by un, uh, these uh, dalits and untouchables under the hindu caste system okay his very famous work is balut which was written originally in marathi language and it was translated by jerry pinto okay and this is considered to be as the first autobiography to be written in marathi language by a dalit writer okay so i uh, see they are not using hindi language uh, for reference you can take uh, example of daya pawar itself because they want to firstly to educate their own community about their uh, rights okay then their works are getting translated so his other famous works are chavdi dalit janiva and two of his compilations of articles and vittal is a, a, a another com, uh, collection of short story and he also wrote screenplay for jabbar patel's film dr ambedkar so you can see how ambedkar is a very important figure for these dalit writers okay now i'm moving on to the next writer very very famous om prakash valmiki you must have heard the name of om prakash valmiki uh, have you yes yes ma'am yeah so he is famous for his autobiography juthan okay and this work got translated into english by arun prabha mukherjee so om prakash valmiki himself is a dalit writer he is a he is a dalit man and he had four brothers and two sisters and uh, they were always called as quote and quote chuhad okay so his father thought that in order to <clears throat> eradicate this differentiation and this uh, uh, you know this is a kind of abusive word used towards them so he thought that the education is the only medium by which one can rise above his status so his father's all efforts were to make his children study and and they did also uh, so he went on to study by a christian missionary but due to poor uh, lack of equipment he couldn't continue there and he had to get admitted in the school but 
there he is not allowed to drink water from the tap and he has two friends ram singh and sukhan singh who were also from the outcast community and they all are getting humiliated om prakash is being asked to clean and sweep the floor before the uh, uh, upper caste children come and sit there and this is you know uh, the just because of his dalit name the headmaster is ridiculing him and uh, he is asking valmiki to do the house chores of the headmaster his father comes to know about it he goes to the gram pradhan and asks that why why this is happening with us why we are getting such kind of uh, tra tra traumas why we are suffering like this so the gram pradhan see the irony the gram pradhan himself hates these dalit people and says okay i'll look into the matter okay i'll i'll see it but he himself hates these dalit men he wrote two other collections of short, short stories named as salam and ghuspath ye and in addition he wrote dalit sahitya dalit sahitya ka saundarya shastra and safai ka devta do chera his autobiographical work juthan is very famous juthan means education the theme of juthan is education juthan means the left over okay they never get something new from the upper caste people they always get the leftovers if you remember bhakha can you uh, recall that instance in which uh, bhakha is uh, uh, getting a, a chapati thrown at him which uh, goes near the sewage if you if you remember anybody yes ma'am you can you can remember how traumatic it is for bhakha he just hates himself for being a dalit okay so i am moving on to the next writer now we will talk about women in dalit literature so uh, see uh, now till now i was talking about men in dalit literature now these dalit lit uh, literature represents women who have been going through triple discrimination firstly they are getting uh, exploited by these colonial rulers secondly by these upper caste men and thirdly by their own dalit men okay so you can see uh, how much trauma they are going through okay then there is a writer named mohini chamarin and uh, she is the first dalit woman writer of short stories who wrote thieves of the subordinated and she published it in hindi magazine named kavya manoranjan in these writings what you can see the voice and anger voice of anger and revolt especially of the women and that too of a dalit woman which is coming out for the first time so these dalit women are talking their mind out for the first time they are asking for their right and they are writing it so some major uh, dalit women writers are firstly is uh, bama faustina susairaj bama is very very important uh, do you know any famous work by bama sangati and kurukku the autobiographical work yes ma'am kurukku yeah very good she is a very famous feminist writer and she raised a question on patriarchy which is prevalent in the dalit family she rose to fame with her autobiographical novel karukku which is based on her childhood experiences and the experiences which she went through as a dalit christian woman in tamil nadu these things are being talked about okay and this book won cross book award also sangati got translated by dalit uh, dalit writer and activist jhupaka subhadra jhupaka subhadra is another famous personality and her essay single by choice is talking about happily unmarried women it is a collection of 13 essays by unmarried women and they are talking about their identity and their freedom she uh, quote and quote she says i like being myself my being my freedom my identity is not for anyone and her works 
focus on caste and gender uh, gender discrimination which is practiced in christianity and hinduism okay uh, the famous work kuruku is based on her family and uh, when her family worked in the houses of higher class people she wasn't allowed to touch the utensils they were cleaning the utensils okay but they were not allowed to use that utensil see the hypocrisy and she got criticized at school and college for her color because she is a black woman uh, she is brown okay she is not black but she is brown but still she is getting discriminated at school for her caste and for her color and for her clothes as well so people used to run away from her and her gr grandmother is very uh, submissive very loyal towards these upper class men and she says that let them do whatever they want we are dalits and this is our our daily life and and we have to bear it but bama is not ready to accept it she is not at all uh, committing to all this uh, uh, this trauma and she say, she is uh, later on becoming a teacher and she is fighting against this discrimination okay is it clear yes ma'am yes ma'am okay okay now uh, let me talk about the next writer urmila pawar urmila pawar is a pioneer dalit feminist writer she is she is she is very famous for her work based on feminism and caste discrimination in marathi language okay so she is very very famously known for aidan which is an autobiography written in marathi and translated into english by maya pandit as the weave of my life a dalit woman's memoir okay so there is another writer named vandan sonalkar who has written a foreword for the book and aidan is talking about her childhood okay and the po poverty which she has been through in her childhood but she also talk about the first night which she spent with her husband and she says it was disgusting it was disgusting and she says that uh, i i'll i'll not talk about my husband much because he doesn't need to be remembered okay and she is just ridiculing her own husband and and her married life she is condemning marriage and she tells how she rose above her station and she questions the order of the society uh, and what is aidan aidan means uh, basket okay uh, it is it is basket weaving activity which is getting linked to the right to her writing oh, and she says that my mother is weaving she is trying to settle a, a kind of a linear relationship with these all these uh, differences but my pen is going to bring revolution i am not going to settle down i am not going to stay here and stay quiet i will speak up i'll ask for my rights okay so the next writer i'm going to talk is meena kanda swami Meena Kanda Swami is a feminist writer, and her famous works are *Touch*, *Mrs. Militancy*, *The Gypsy Goddesses*, and she is commonly known for a portrait of a writer as a young wife or *When I Hit You*. *Ayankali* is based on the life of a Dalit leader who takes active part in the protests. Then, uh, somebody's audio is on. Can you please turn it off? Next writer is Baby Kamle. Can you please turn it off? I don't know. I cannot see the name. Uh, okay. Deepak, Deepak, Deepak. Deepak, sir, please mute. Okay. Baby Kamle, famously known for her autobiography, Jina Amucha, Our Life, originally written in Marathi language. Jina Amucha was translated into English as the prisons we broke, and it got translated into English by Maya Pandit. Always remember the translators, and it represents the period of accommodation and talks about Mahar caste and women of that caste. Okay, 
now there are few more writers uh, and their names and their important works have been given here so uh, in uh, shanta bai krishna bai kamle in 1940 she was the first dalit woman to become a teacher and she wrote her own autobiography the kaleidoscopic story of my life majya jalmachi chitrakatha then the next writer is kumut pawade and her autobiography antha spot is discussing the issues of exploitations of dalit women then there are a few more writers yashika dat who wrote momaya coming coming out as a dalit and p shivakami wrote the taming of the women or anand dhai okay now i'll talk about indian novels who has presented dalit characters by indian writers these writers are not dalit but they are talking about dalit character they the protagonist are dalit or they are talking about the issues which is in relation to the dalits okay so prem chandra wrote rangbhoomi mulk raj anand wrote untouchables bhaka okay you are ananta murthy samskara where a dalit man is having an illegitimate uh, when a very a, a priest is having illegitimate relationship with uh, a dalit woman and uh, how he is not getting a proper funeral okay then roman basu wrote outcast rohington mystery a fine balance if you remember emergency indira gandhi deena pawar okay then arundhati roy can you name the dalit character in god of small things yes ma'am ma'am velutha yeah very good velutha okay so that's it we'll stop here thank you so much for your patient listening and we'll meet soon you can tell me what else you want and uh, you can tell me what you want for the next class ma'am okay. literary criticism okay uh, and uh, did you like this class or this yes, session uh, was yes, was it yes yes very wonderful very wonderful thank you himanshi yes. uh, wait a second there is a question in the chat box yes. by sonali kumari if you can deal it then it will be very good yeah yeah wait let me see what's the difference between delineation and derivation uh see uh this is a broader uh, question like this needs a proper discussion uh you can text me with this question and i can respond you there i am there in the group uh, litmania and by the name himanshu singh so you can uh, text me there and i can reply you in a very you know broader sense because here i'll be telling you a few points which will not be uh, appropriate in according to this ma'am excuse me ma'am yeah Ma'am, can you answer this question in the group? Can you suggest a book for Dalit literature and literary theory and criticism? Ah, uh, there is a book by M R Anand and Eleanor Zeliot, I guess. And Annihilation of the Caste is also an important book. And uh, see, if you're talking about gate perspective, then uh, my P uh, P P T is already there in the group. You can take uh, uh, important author's name from there, and you can uh, do a great. Uh, a uh, research over it so that your uh, lit the lit literature part is complete okay so i have tried to inculcate with everything which is there and which can be asked in the exam but if you want extra uh, you can go on google and uh, do a research there okay yes ma'am uh, the next topic would be the post colonial literature Uh, i have already taken a class on post colonial literature and uh, on our youtube channel the video is available you can also check it from there thank you uh, from an ma entrance perspective a book for literary theory uh, i i basically refer to uh, pramod ke naya and you can also go for uh, various other uh, writers such as uh, beginning theory by peter barry and and uh, in our group also we have provided various books related to literary theory you can refer it from there 
Sri Lankan literature and criticism. Okay, I'll try to bring it as soon as possible. Yeah, Jyoti Parikh, you were asking something. Uh, I'm unable yes, to tell you. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I have said that the question one somebody asked. Can yes, you answer yes, yes. that question in the group itself? Yeah, I got it. You are talking about the question uh, posted by Sonali Kumari. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. I may be Fine. wrong because I don't know more about new literature. But as far as I come to know, Dalit literature hasn't been included in new literatures as its main focus was to promote writings coming from the different countries, but not the case with the Dalit literature. Uh, see, uh, this is more of a debatable kind of a thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know why they do. Uh, they haven't included it in the group uh, of new literatures. But yeah, you can say. And see, uh, this is what uh, Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak is talking in the subaltern literature, that whenever the center is going to talk about these Dalits, they are basically uh, not acknowledging the issues of Dalits. They are talking about themselves and they don't stop. They don't even pay a heed towards the problems of the Dalits. So why we are including them in the center? Uh, let them at the margin and they will deal, deal with themselves. Okay, I'm talking about subalterns. But here Dalits, they have got another uh, special references. See, new literatures is different if you talk about Dalit, but nowadays universities and syllabi are prescribing Dalit writings because they want us to know. They want us to know our own country better. So I don't know why they haven't included it in the new literature genre, but uh, for my, uh, you know, from my end, I really want uh, it to be propagated so uh, a lot so that we can all uh, have a broader perspective. See, uh, we all come from a background where we don't know uh, how Bhaka has been through. But by reading about Bhaka, we come to know that how much traumatized he is just in a single day. And that gives us a perspective that, yes, uh, we have to be a little more liberal towards the lower caste people. Uh, see, I, I have always this thing in my mind that why there is so much reservation. Okay, I am very... Uh, uh, but by being very unbiased, uh, I, I think that they need it. They need it. They, kind, they need a, pr a pro proper representation. They need this, uh, you know, we, we are at a higher status. Yes, we all are because we are he here using laptops, we're using uh, Google Meet and talking and studying. But somewhere somebody is there who is doing uh, the laboring work or they, they are carrying feces. Okay, I never knew that uh, a Dalit man has to carry feces on his head. While I read about Bhaka, I came to know about this. Okay, okay uh, so this... Ma'am, ma yeah. excuse me, ma'am. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jyoti. Yeah, so uh, Hemansi, I wanted to try to answer this question. Yeah, please, please. Yeah, so, yeah please. See, uh, uh, the question is, uh, what is the difference between the delineation of Dalit characters uh, uh, by Dalit writers or uh, non-Dalit writers. See, and the second question is uh, why Dalit literature has not been included in new literatures. So in this regard, I want to say, see, uh, first of all, maximum, not maximum, but uh, uh, many critiques has considered Dalit literature not as a proper literature, just as a Dalit movement. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, what is Dalit movement? So why did they call even Dalit movement? Why not literature? Because they said Dalit movement, because it was, its own purpose was to bring the change and the betterment in the society of Dalit people or the betterment of Dalit, Dalit writers. So, or use me, you may say Dalit people. Okay. So uh, maybe this could be one reason why they they didn't include Dalit literature in uh, you know um, new literature because they didn't consider it as a literature at all. They just said it is a movement and it served its purpose. People talked about it. People are talking about it, and it is serving its its purpose. Okay. So uh, they I think this is the one reason they they didn't include the, the literature in new literature. And the second question is the, you know, Dalit, uh, Dalit characters by the Dalit writer and by non-Dalit writers. You know, when you say Dalit characters, most of the writers 
have written their work dalit writers in maximum work you will see the writer himself somewhere is the character of the work somewhere they have like they dalit literature is all about you know whatever is going on with dalit suffering just they have put it uh, on on the paper so that people could read it and they could understand it why dalits are being suffering since last uh, as he wants to say 3000 years you know so for example you see the bhimaina you know bhimaina the graphic novel uh, it is written by uh, i guess uh, subhas vyam and durga bai vyam you know in that lit in that book in that graphic novel bhim the ambedkar himself is the character in om prakash valmiki is juthan i think somewhere it is an i think is uh, autobiography autobiography autobiographical uh, work and most of the work you know, most of the work characters himself the writer himself is the somewhere is the character and if you know non dalit writers if they are writing about non dalit writers somewhere they lack the originality the suffering you know the emotion the the, the oppression they have faced so this is the you know difference why non dalit writer non dalit writer has not been uh, uh, very much good in uh, you know uh, serving the purpose of dalit literature or you can say dalit movement so uh, this is it i guess this was uh, this is my thinking or you may explore it as much as you can thank you excuse me thank you so much uh, jk z z k z k uh, yeah jyoti yeah jyoti firstly I'll... actually can you give me some suggestions for preparing gate exam 2020 okay i'll do that confused. at the end uh, yeah the, that sharuk will do that well uh, so we'll uh, ask him at the end of the session let me address a question by z k uh, you are not wrong you have written at the end i may be wrong no you are correct absolutely correct while uh, see if you are from a higher stature uh, how would you write about the tribulation which a lower caste person is going through your perspective is going to be totally different and the person who is suffering through it can be writing in a very broader way and he'll be writing everything which he has seen which ha he has been through for the, you can call it the first hand experience so you're not wrong and uh, see in literature i i always think uh, one one of my friend uh, when when we were in college discussing so our teacher said in literature you can never be wrong you can question everything you can give answer for everything if you have a logical answer to it okay if you can justify it it is correct okay so never assert yourself that i may be wrong you can be uh, right also and it is correct whatever you have written is correct uh then uh, there is a question from to krishna sir uh then where would you like to place mahashweta devi's dropadi uh see according to me uh you can call it it's a mostly, feminist think, work uh, yeah yeah krishna please please i think it's not me some other krishna will be there no it's you only uh mr krishna you have said that dalit literature only talking about the dalit writer <laughs> so what do you say about the no no dalit literature is not talking about only about the dalit writers it is also no, 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 talking no. about colonization it is also talking about uh, uh, the upper caste or feminism okay so there there is everything engrossed it is just that these dalit writers are coming themselves forward and they are writing so that's why we call it as dalit literature see no no okay. no i i didn't say like people talk about only dalit dalit like uh, dalit peoples see i just gave you a reference in the uh, in regard to the characters of dalit writers and non dalit writers okay all uh, and uh, most of the things in today's world whoever is you know suffering from any kind of suppression they are considered as dalit this is the you know broader sense of dalit the word dalit did you understand uh 
ZK, if you uh, wanna ask anything regarding Jopadi, uh, then you can take it as a subaltern uh, literature writing as well because a woman and that too, uh, she is getting widow at the end. And then how this is a uh, feminist work and then uh, you can take it as a Dalit writing as well because uh, she is talking about so many things at once. She is talking about the fearlessness of a woman how she is getting naked and she is going through uh, to uh, in front of that uh, policeman and saying it out loud that you cannot undress me you you can undress me you cannot ask me to dress up because that's my choice and i have never seen such a fierce character in literature up till now so she she says you can rape me but you cannot tell me how I'll get uh, a proper recognition or how I'll get, uh, so to say, that Hindi word which we often use, Ijjad. You won't, uh, you won't tell me where I will get that. Okay. So she is coming up. She is fighting for it. So you can see it through various perspectives. Okay. Just not try to limit it. Uh, you can give a various interpretation towards any word. And that's what we do in uh, post-structuralism and new criticism. Okay. A work can have multiple uh, perspectives. A work can be seen as various, uh, through various perspectives. And it can be dealt through various uh, uh, genres or through various ideas or through various theories. Okay. Let's make it a, Draupadi is more like of a writerly text, if you will say Write early text by Roland Barth. Okay. Can you tell me what is the concept of write early text? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Take, uh, tell me Matloob Ahmed. Yes, ma'am. Write early text is open to interpret by the writers. Writers can uh, uh, express... Readers. It can, oh, it is open yes, yes. readers. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Reader can interpret any line according to his oh. understanding. There is, see, uh, he, Roland Barth himself said that the author, when one, one, uh, work is getting completed, the author dies. And now it is uh, in the hands of the readers. So a reader becomes the creator of the text there. He uh, gives his own interpretation. And uh, now and then I refer to uh, 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 an instance which happened with me only. Uh, you must have read uh, Nisi Ezekiel's work, uh, the Night of a Scorpion. The Night of a Scorpion. I'm taking, uh, talking about Night of a Scorpion. Okay. So Night of a Scorpion uh, is about a insect biting the mother and mother is trembling in pain and uh, various uh, villagers are coming. They are chanting mantras and the father is trying various uh, uh, scientific uh, works which to work something, something to work out. Okay. So they are full of superstitions. But one of my classmates did a critical interpretation. We were doing this. Was, that was our practical criticism class in which we were not told about the work. We were just given the text. Okay. So what she interpreted? She interpreted it as a woman is getting raped by a man. And that man is going away somewhere. And she is trembling in fear and pain. And the villagers are coming and saying, just let it go. Thank God that uh, your, uh, your so-called Izzat is safe and uh, let it go. Then they are searching for that culprit. And then she is trembling in pain. But nobody is asking her that why you are so much shaken. You should come up. You should say. She is, uh, at the end, you must have seen uh, in the poem itself, the mother is thanking God that uh, she got bitten by the uh, insect. Uh, her children are safe. So in that work, she did a very another level of critical interpretation. And I got amused by that. I was, I was amazed. I was amazed. I just felt like, wow, how can somebody think about to that next level? And that's what is our, in, that's how our interpretation should be. Now, uh, Sharuk, I would like to address Jyoti's uh, question. You, you to address Jyoti's question, which is uh, how to prepare for the gate exam. Yeah, fine, fine. So I, I have made a separate lecture uh, over this uh, on our YouTube channel. And then I have also posted many of the 
uh, answer regarding this because I have got frequently this question in the group and I have posted uh, uh, means many materials and uh, as well as uh, what are the tips or what will be the strategy to crack it. But then I, I have also addressed that uh, um, for the time being we do not have any strategy at all because uh, uh, it's it's very new. So uh, how we can understand understand and also how can we decode the pattern? Because they have just uh, taken this examination for, for the only time. So how you are going to decode that? Means to decode UGC net, we we uh, have to means appear in the two, three examination at least. Even then we are not able to uh, decode the question paper pattern, especially if you have appeared in the last examination, last, uh, last uh, UGC net examination. So in that case means it, it will take some time. But then the instruction is very important. The instruction that is there on the paper that is very important because you commit sometime mistake because you consider that everything is MCQ but there are MSQ, there are negative marking. So read all the instructions carefully before answering. Because in the MSQ section, there is no negative marking. Apart from MSQ, there is negative marking. So many of my friends, they have means they thought that uh, MSQ also carries the negative marking and they have not attempted it. So don't do that. Attempt all the MSQ. But then while you are in the MCQ section, be means, means very careful about that. That is one thing. And